We're filming this at 9 o'clock at night and both the kids are sleeping already. So it's dark. Shh. Don't wait them. <laughs> Aloha. Welcome back to Kincho Quest. In this video, we're going to give you an update of how we've been preparing for long-term, around-the-world family travel. In two weeks, we're going to be leaving for Japan. So we just want to update you with what we've done so far to prepare. It's really hot. I'm mumping. Please excuse the sweat. We had to turn off the fan to film this. Okay, so... Should we just stand there with you? No, keep rolling. Okay. Let's keep rolling. This is real. We're going to keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're preparing for long-term travel, which could be months, for us it's at least a year, could be a few years, um, there's some things that you may have to do that you wouldn't need to if you were just going on a vacation for a week or two. So we just want to kind of go through some of the things that we've been doing. If you're preparing for your first around the world trip, then these are some things you might want to have on your checklist. The very first thing we did was to get the kids' passports. So Kaisho already had a passport, but for kids, they're only valid for five years. And so he's five years old now, and it was time for him to renew his. So he got a new one, and Harumi got her very first passport ever. And luckily those were processed really quickly. We got them in the mail a lot sooner than we expected. So if you are local to the 808 here in Honolulu specifically, I highly, highly recommend going to the office and inside the library. They're, they did it super fast and super friendly service. It was very low key and really nice process getting that done. The second thing we did, you wanna talk about the global entry? We've been trying to get a proof of global entry However, we got a snag. When we first um, was looking into it, it didn't say it was gonna take so long. It said it was gonna take a few weeks. And now the, there's a big sign on the government website that says average wait time is 11 weeks just to get pre-approved. So we paid $400, $100 per person, and we may never get them. <laughs> but we're really hoping we get our notice for an interview before we all leave the country. Fingers crossed on that one. Yeah, because if we do, at least here in Honolulu, the wait time is very um, short once you get pre-approved. So right now it's like a day or two. So hopefully we'll get lucky. If not, our only other chance is if we re-enter in any U.S. port that has a Customs and Border Patrol, we should be able to go straight in without an interview. But you have to do that in one year. If we don't get that done in one year, then we're out 400 bucks. So we'll see how that goes. And I had been hoping to use that for my upcoming trip to California. So we now have our departure date for our big trip. We're going to be leaving on June 5th and headed to Japan. But to complicate things a little bit more, Harumi and I are actually leaving two days from now to go to California for about a week, visit my family, attend a friend's wedding. So that's making the packing process a little more complicated because tomorrow I'm going to be packing up for Harumi and myself, heading off to California. And then while we're gone, George and Kaisha will be moving out of our apartment. And if I left anything behind, it's probably just going to get thrown away or donated. So I need to make sure that I do a good job packing and I don't leave anything that I want. And we ended up in this situation because we unexpectedly had to move out of the apartment that we had been renting for over a year. And we ended up in an apartment where we could only be here for exactly one month. So we're leaving on the 5th. That means they have to move out on the 1st. And we'll be staying in Airbnb for three or four nights. Yeah, so it kind of makes for three packing rounds. I need to pack, then the boys need to pack to move out. And then once we reunite, on June 2nd, um, I'm going to have to do laundry and repack the whole families. So I've been having to figure out how I'm going to pack the suitcases for California and then also how we're going to pack them for our long-term travels. And in the meantime, between the time from when Heidi leaves, actually we've been doing this for months already, we have to purge everything else that we have. So whatever we are taking with us is all we have. 
Well, not exactly. Well, I am taking a big suitcase to my parents' place when I go visit, so I'm going to be loaded pretty heavy going to California um, because three quarters of the three quarters of the stuff I'm taking with me, I'm actually going to leave with my parents. So that's like a suitcase and a half that's staying with them, and I'll come back with only a half full suitcase that we'll then repack when I get back. But overall, I think that's pretty good. In the past, when Heidi and I first did our round the world travel, I would say we packed up everything into a 20 by 10 storage unit and we left the stuff in there for about five years. Because we thought we were going for just maybe a year traveling and we didn't realize this was going to turn into a lifestyle for us. So now we just, whenever we travel, we sell everything that we have. We don't keep an apartment. We just get rid of everything. You save a lot of money that way. We don't even have a car. We haven't had a car in years. That's a big thing on how to afford long-term travel that a lot of people don't realize is we no longer own a home. We don't keep an apartment back home. We try to keep very little stuff back home. So basically when we're paying for a hotel or an Airbnb, that's just in place of if we were paying for rent. And actually our first Airbnb in Japan will be saving money. We'll be paying for a month to stay there and that'll be less than what we currently pay for rent in Honolulu. One of the things still on our checklist for Japan is to buy the rail pass. We need to buy that while we're still in the United States. So hopefully George will be doing that soon. Um, and these are not in any particular order, but I want to just kind of go through in my head and check my list of the things we've done. Um, we've also gone to see the dentist, the optometrist, the doctors, getting all that out of the way while we're in the United States, checking with our health insurance about how the coverage works while we're out of the country. One thing that we figured out on our last trip that worked really well is using Charles Schwab Bank for our checking because they have an awesome policy where they not only, they don't charge you an ATM withdrawal fee, but they also reimburse you if the ATM machine in a foreign country charged you a fee. So at the end of the month, if you've been taking money out of machines that have been charging you a fee, you get that recredited back to your checking account which is pretty awesome. Super awesome. Save you a ton of money in the long haul. And Charles so. Schwab also has really good customer service. And another thing is um, we don't take out a bunch of foreign currency before we go to a country. We just wait until we arrive in the airport. And the first thing is we go to an ATM and withdraw the currency there to have enough to get to our hotel, to get a taxi ride, whatever we need. So the only time we take currency is if we still have some left over from a previous trip. So we do have a little bit of yen and a little bit of Thai bot that we'll be taking with us. And surprisingly, we'll go into more of this detail, but Japan is a, I would say a cash system still. That's still their preferred. Which a lot of it is coins. You <laughs> yeah. end up with a really heavy coin purse there. And another thing that's specific to long-term travel is we use a service called Virtual Post Mail. And the really cool thing is we've been using this for years and this time when we signed up for it, they let us choose our number we wanted. So the way the mail receiving service works is it's a business and they have a physical address. So this one just happens to be in California, but you can choose which one you want. They receive your mail, they scan it, put it up in your account, and then wherever you are in the world, you can log in and you can say, Okay, I want you to throw that away. I'd like you to forward that to such and such address. So two reasons I'm really glad to be sticking with virtual post mail is one, we can have back our same address that we used in past years and sometimes people still accidentally send still us mail yeah. to that address. So it works out if any straggler is still using that address that we'll get it. And the other great thing is that they can deposit our checks. So when George receives his Payments from his clients, they go to virtual post, it'll be scanned, and then we can tell them to deposit it. And it's about a $5 fee for them to mail the checks into the bank and get that deposited. Another thing that we did was we switched phone carriers. We've been having trouble with, <laughs> with so many carriers lately, so we decided to give Google Fi a try. And the main reason we decided to do this was to have international coverage. So usually we don't have a problem with this as well because in most countries getting a SIM card is super cheap, way cheaper than here in the United States. For instance, in Thailand, we were paying about $25 a month for unlimited data 
for two phones. For two phones. And it's it was so easy. Crazy fast. You just too. go to a 7 Eleven and get a SIM card. Yeah. So super awesome. But, but in Japan, it's hard. Yeah, in Japan, it's very difficult to get a SIM card, almost impossible, I would say. It, they're starting to ease up on it, but but don't think you can get one. Instead, you see people carrying out on these pocket Wi Fi's, which we might have to do as well. But with Google Fi, at least, even if you don't have a, what is, I think they call it a certified Google phone, Google Fi phone, most of the phones will work. They may not do what's called this fancy network switching thing. However, they claim that you should still have a very good connection. And so far, at least in Hawaii, it's been fantastic. It's worked really well for us and it's really cheap. The main reason is that it has no international roaming. So it's the same price wherever we go for, I think over 200 countries, at least everywhere we wanna go, it will be covered. And we can use it as a mobile hotspot, which means we can use it for data on our laptops to do work. There is a really good, another really good feature they have is that when you have a family plan, like so we have two phones, the maximum that they will charge you for is up to 10 gigabytes of data. Is that right? And it's, yeah, I think 10 gigs. After that, there's no more, it's capped at that. So it's $10 per gig. So that would be $100. And then I think the regular fee is like $35 a month. So the max we would pay per month is $135. That, that is, that's a little high, but that is only if we go over that limit. So we'll try to use Wi-Fi as much as possible as well. And again, this is only for in Japan and other places, you know, if we have Wi-Fi, we won't be able to, we won't be using that kind of data. It's mostly if we got to be uploading YouTube videos is where that's going to take gigs at a time. But a lot of the Airbnbs will have a mobile hotspot in them that we can use. Right. Um, one other thing that I did was canceling the utilities for the end of the month for this apartment. That was pretty much just our internet provider. I just had to call them and let them know that we'll be moving at the end of the month and you need to return your motor and the router when you move out. Right. So one thing that we were super thankful that we did is we signed our kids up for swimming lessons. Aaron, their teacher, was really great and it was so neat that the swimming lessons were in the Magic Island Lagoon. So they were actually swimming in salt water that comes into the lagoon from the ocean, which I much prefer over a swimming pool with chlorine. And Kaisho just did so well. He learned to swim underwater. He really faced his fears and got to the point where he could put his face in and where he was comfortable with going underwater. And we're just keep going up to the swimming pool to try to practice with him. And on our trip, we'll have a lot of places that we'll be going swimming or snorkeling. So we just wanted the kids to be able to fully enjoy that experience. And we'll keep working on their swimming skills with them. Even how do me? Yeah, she was very taking impressive. taking lessons too and swimming underwater. Um, so we just want to keep them enjoying and loving being in the ocean. A lot of our videos have been packing videos, and that has been a big thing we've been doing is refining, test packing, coming up with our checklist of exactly what we're packing. Almost every Saturday since we started this process, we've done test packing. And one of the most difficult things for us was figuring out our day pack or everyday carry. I just learned this what the techie guys EDC. call it. Or camera bag for George. Um, for me, it's like day pack slash diaper bag. And we tried so many bags. I was considering doing a video on this alone because I bought and returned so many bags. You wanna talk about which ones you ended up with? So I ended up with a bag called the Errant, it's by Boundary. They're a Kickstarter type company. And uh, it's not the ideal bag, but I will be creating a video on that showing what exactly I'm putting into it. It is gonna serve the purpose for now. And I had ordered one too, but it was just too masculine for me and not exactly what I was looking for. I had tried a Lily Jade Anna medium backpack and that was too small. I couldn't fit my laptop in it. So that just was not gonna work for airplane days. I tried like three different travel purses. I finally settled on a pretty big size. I think it's 10 liters pack safe purse to use every day and like as my diaper bag. But then for airplane travel days, I still have my North Face backpack. So I'll continue to use that. I was looking for a better option than the North Face backpack. I tried the Boundary Errant, the Lily Jade Anna Medium. I tried different 
pack safe purses, I ended up back where I started, but I'll be using that North Face one for a while longer. Neither of us have ever found the perfect Yeah, travel. we might just have to make our own at some point because I don't think anybody can make a bag that's going to work for everybody. That's really what it comes down to. So, But we should have been a lot farther along than we are now, but thankfully we had been purging our stuff all along because we, we haven't mentioned I only mentioned it briefly, you can oh. explain in detail on So we had to suddenly move out of our apartment. We are still living in the same building, fortunately, but we basically flooded out of our apartment and we had to move out like that day. There was water damage, water we damage. had to rip the floor out. It was a disaster, so it was like pack and move out this afternoon. Thankfully, we had already reduced some, but we had not reduced nearly enough. If we had been down to just what we were taking on the trip, it would have been so easy to pack a few bags and roll out of there. It took like a month to get back to normal, which is about now. <laughs> it was a big lesson. The less you have, the easier situations like that will be. Like once we're traveling, if we have to up and leave, no big deal, because we've just got a few bags. So we won't use that as an excuse, but it kind of is. Yeah, it set us back. It set us back a bit on the packing and on getting videos done, but we're back rolling again. And we will be producing a video at least once a week. Promise, mm -hmm. right? We're going to be showing you the details of transportation, how to get around, what foods to eat, things to do with kids, and let us know in the comments below if there's any certain types of travel videos you'd like to see from us. Oh, and also Kaisha. Kaisha has his own channel called Kaisha's Kitchen. Please check it out. Hop on over and subscribe to that one as well. Yeah, we'll eventually have a link for it up there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're leaving in two weeks. We mentioned that right in two weeks. But two I'm weeks. leaving in two days and I'm flying with a toddler without him. So that's a new experience for me. I flew with our son so many times, but it was a, a whole family, so it was no big deal. To me, I am a bit nervous with flying just me and a one-year-old. So we'll see how that goes. Come join us on our adventure around the world. Please subscribe and turn on notifications.